Well, as a busy working mom, I often find myself making foods that I know my kids are going to eat. Let me be honest about that. Can anybody say mac and cheese? And then I end up eating what they leave on their plates. We don't want to waste any food, and I do it without even thinking about it. But that once on my lips, yeah, it lands right there on my hips. Well, my next guest says I need to use my brain. Dr. Larry McCleary views weight loss through the eyes of the brain. He calls it the belly-brain connection, and he's written a book called Feed Your Brain, Lose Your Belly. Dr. McCleary joins us this morning as part of our book author series. Hello, doctor. Good morning to you. Danielle, it's great to be here. This is such a fascinating topic for me because you're a brain surgeon, and I don't think that many people would connect, you know, brain surgeon and weight loss expert, <laughs> that that would go hand in hand, but this really is a novel perspective that you have here. Well, I think both, most people know intuitively that to make a breakthrough in a tough field like this, you have to look at things differently, and that's what we're talking about today. I'm a brain surgeon. I look at weight loss through the eyes of the brain, the brain-belly connection, and that's provided a number of helpful insights to speed weight loss and to eat so that we keep our brains healthy. Is it about choosing the right, is it about dieting, number one, or is it more about choosing the right foods? Well, it's about taking a lifestyle that you're comfortable with, and that means choosing the right foods. And let me explain what I mean. When we eat a meal, our body uses some of the energy. It stores the rest in fat cells to be used in between meals when we're burning calories but not eating. And if your body releases those fat calories, everything works well and you stay thin. But what happens if those fat cells don't release the calories, and I call that sticky fat cells. That sends the wrong message to the brain, makes it turn on the hunger centers. We overeat even before we've burned all the calories from the prior meal. And that really is why we overeat in the first place. And so what does making the proper food choices do in terms of helping your brain say, yeah, I'm losing weight here? Well, if you make the proper food choices, then you avoid the sticky fat cell problem so your body can tap in your fat cells and you lose weight without being hungry. Mm -hmm. So it, let me make sure that I'm clear here then. It's not about banishing fats from your plate. Just the opposite. I think if we banish fat, which the government did 30 years ago, Americans listened and obesity rates have almost tripled since then. So I believe we need to add fat, especially brain healthy fat, back into the diet. What are some examples then of foods that we need to add to our diet um, and add to our plates uh, to lose weight? Well, the first one is cold water fish. Our moms have told us that that's brain food, and it's because it contains the delicate omega-3 fats. And cold water fish include tuna, salmon, trout, mackerel, sardines, and anchovies. But there are a number of plant fats that are just as brain and waste healthy, and those include the f delicate fats from nuts and seeds, from flax seeds, flax seed oil, and the newest superstar is coconut oil. Ah. That can banish appetite for hours. Oh, really? Coconut yes. oil. All right. Mental note there. Uh, with all of this, what kinds of results have you seen? Well, people who go on the diet always tell me, I can't believe how long I can go without getting hungry. And we did a clinical trial to show how effective the diet was, and it produced almost one pound of weight loss a week, which is a lot if you're gaining weight or if you haven't been able to lose weight. And you know what? The foods that you mentioned are really not, they're, they're diet foods, but not like what I would normally think of as, a diet, as diet foods. They're good foods. They're foods that you would normally want to eat anyway. You know what I mean? Absolutely. And those are the brains, those are the brain's building blocks. Blocks. And that's why eating a diet that's good for the waistline is also good for the brain. And you know, doctor, it's not just you saying this or preaching this. Feed Your Brain, Lose Your Belly has received some really great endorsements from well-respected doctors. We're talking about best-selling authors. So besides the proof being in the pudding, or, or in this case, the belly, your colleagues are really praising this as well. Well, it's always nice when your peers believe in what you're doing. And we've had a number of research endorse the diet, and we've, better than that, had people treating people who have had many pounds to lose successfully with this type of diet. Mm, well, I tell you, just an amazing approach to this, and I appreciate you sharing it with our viewers on the show this morning. Thank you, Doctor. Great to be here. Thanks. Great to have you. And again, the book is called Feed Your Brain, Lose Your Belly. For more information on Dr. McCleary or the book, please visit the website drmcclary.com.